In this video, I want to show you how to make this document using LaTeX. What the document will consist of is a title, two names, the date, a section title and section titles throughout, some text, some footnotes or thanks for each of the names. So you can thank, you know, the people that helped you write it or uh, kind of put where you're from, your school or any identifying information. We'll make use of a header that tracks the various section titles and numbers them, as well as a uh, upper right hand header that has uh, a name of our choosing. We'll modify this line up here so that it's a little thicker than maybe uh, the default one. We'll also make sure there's page numbers at the bottom. In addition, we'll work with tables. So we'll create a table in a LaTeX document. And finally, we'll add a very simple reference page at the end. Now, the goal of this video is not to give you a comprehensive knowledge of LaTeX or all of the commands. Instead, it's to give you a kind of rough and ready overview of how to make your first document. And after that, you can work from there. So in order to create this document using LaTeX, we're going to make use of a cloud-based LaTeX editor. And we have two options to choose for or two main options. One is Overleaf and you can sign up for an account at overleaf.com. It's completely free. So you'll notice if you go try to sign up, it's not going to cost you anything and you can pretty much make any document you want um, using this free account. The additional paid accounts are going to give you additional features like, you know, syncing your files to uh, Dropbox, or if you have humongous or really large uh, projects, then you might want to upgrade. But for this, we only need the free account. So Overleaf is one. Overleaf is great. I don't have any complaints about it. The other account or the other program is ShareLaTeX, and you can go to ShareLaTeX.com and sign up for an account there. It also is completely free. You have a lot of functionality and you can pretty much create every possible document you want using this free account. The upgrades, again, similar to Overleaf, are found in syncing to Dropbox or GitHub or uh, having expanded document history or so forth. In this video, I'm going to use Share LaTeX, and I encourage you to use that one if you want to follow along really closely if this is your first introduction to LaTeX. If you have some familiarity with LaTeX, then uh, Overleaf is per perfectly fine, and I think you can follow along with this particular uh, tutorial using Overleaf. The first thing you'll do once you've created your account is to create a new project. Now there are a number of templates or example projects you can use from if you need to write a resume, a cover letter, journal article, and so forth. But for here, for this particular video, we will create a blank project. So I'll go ahead and click blank, blank project, and I'm going to name my blank project Logic Homework. So what I have here are three panels. The first panel contains the different files I have. In this tutorial, I'll focus just on using this main.tech file, and we won't be adding any additional files. So I'm going to hide this left panel altogether. And we're going to focus in on these two panels right here. Here on the right hand side is our document, which is compiled throughout our um, creation of it. And on the left hand side, we have our blank document. I won't go through what all of these kind of commands mean. Instead, I'll focus on sort of two divisions of the document. There is a command that says begin document. Everything bef before this begin document is referred to as the preamble. And I'm just going to write essay begins here. And everything after this begin document contains all of the content of our document and everything before it in the preamble contains um, additional information or um, information to format the document itself. So let's focus on the title of our document. Here I've written in logic homework and we can see that there it, we have my name and then the date which consists of a month and the year. And we can find all that information here, title, author, date. And so let's comment above this using the percentage sign. We'll say this is the title information. And we might want to, let's say, add my initial, middle initial, which is W. 
And rather than saying January, let's say we are composing our document in February. We can write February in and then hit recompile. So you notice that everything is recompiled. They added my middle initial and then we changed the date from January to February. Another way of doing this is to simply write slash today and it will give me the day in which I'm compiling the document. So I hit compile again and it'll say January 18th, 2018. Let me add some other features to the to this title. Let's say I don't want the logic homework in plain text. I want to put it in bold. I might hit control B, which would put control text BF and then would make this logic homework bold. Or I might want to make the title in small caps. So I might write text SC, then open brace and a close brace. And when I recompile, it'll change this logic homework into a small caps logic homework. And I think that looks a little bit better. Next, let's add a another author to our essay. Let's add a, let's say it was a co-written essay. And here we can write in this author command and, and let's say we'll write little Davy Agler. Um, so this would be whatever other author that we have. And we'll hit recompile again, and we should see little Davy Agler over here. Next, let's say we want to specify which university each individual belongs to. Here we'll write after each name, slash thanks, and I will write, let's say, the Pennsylvania State University. And after little Davy Agler, I'll write thanks, um, Hogwarts Sorcery School. And when I hit recompile again, we should see a little asterisk right here or a cross and where each individual attends school. You could put other information down there. You could thank somebody for helping you write it or grants or other information. But if we want to do that, we can simply write this thanks right here. Now that we have our title information up here, in the preamble, when we look at the actual document itself, this command slash make title actually takes this information from the preamble and constructs or formats all that information into the document itself. So if we were to remove this by commenting it out with a percentage sign, we should expect all this information to be gone. And that's what happens. So we're going to add this back in. I'm going to comment out, but I'm not going to recompile it quite yet. The next part of our document is our divided into sections. And whenever we want to add additional sections, we can simply write section and then we'll say clarification. And if we want to write subsections within this section, we could say even more clarification. We'll write su slash subsection and it will create a subsection and it will number these automatically. So we write the subsection again, even even more clarification. So when we hit recompile, we should see these different section titles as well as two subsections. And we find that here we have 2.1, 2.2 under the clarification section. The nice thing about this is if we were to move this information, let's say I move these subsections under the introduction, we should see 1.1, 1.2. And so when we hit recompile, that's what we find. We have the introduction and then the two subsections. I'm going to go ahead and put them back. Now I'm going to add some dummy text underneath these different sections. One way of doing that is simply to copy and paste uh, text. So I'm going to go ahead and do that under this first section. I have some text I've kind of copied and now I'm pasting it in like so. So I'm going to hit recompile and I should see a bunch of text under the introduction. And there it is. I see this uh, lorem ipsum text, which is this dummy text that fill, fills up this space. And I could put this under the clarification section as well. And we should see this text underneath the clarification section. Super. Now, rather than writing a bunch of dummy text underneath each one of these sections to create a long document with multiple pages to give so we can highlight the features that we want to talk about, 
I am going to use what's known as a package. Now, when you want to put a LaTeX package into your document, you will need to put it in the preamble. That is the in this space above the begin document. So let me write some packages. Now packages you can think of as just simply add-ons to LaTeX. They just create, a di they consist of different commands for LaTeX. And they, so they allow you to do different things that aren't found in the normal document. And the package I wanna add is uh, a package to create dummy text. And so in order to add this package, I'll write use package and then other, you'll have to kind of search around for the tech packages that are out there. But the one that I want, and I'll put a link in, a link in the description below for a number of different packages you can add. And I'm gonna write Lipsum. This is a package that, as I'll note here, creates dummy text. Now this Lipsum package allows me to write slash Lipsum, and then I can indicate the number of paragraphs I wanna insert after of this dummy text. So I'm going to put uh, open bracket two and um, or I'm going to write one, two, two. So I want two paragraphs of this dummy text and I'll write, I'll take uh, a couple more. I'm going to put two to three, or let's say two to four. And then I'm just going to replicate that text under each one of these subsections. And then I'm going to tack on a conclusion at a conclusion section. And I'll add on a single paragraph here. So now when I click recompile, what I should expect to see are a number of these sections with a bunch of dummy text that's found underneath them. So I'm gonna hit recompile. And you'll see that I have two paragraphs of this lipsum text, followed by more paragraphs, followed by more paragraphs and so forth. So now I have a you know a sort of fleshed out looking document here. It has a number of words and everything's broken into sections. The next thing I want to do is actually add a set of references. And for that, I'm going to create a section, but you'll notice that the other sections are numbered, and I don't I don't want this section numbered, so I'll put slash section and I'll put an asterisk uh, after it, and then I'll write open brackets and I'll put references or we're excited or big bibliography. Now for here, there are a number of packages that allow you to format your references, but I am going to do a very simple way of doing things. If you have a document or a paper that doesn't have a lot of references, let's say it's for a class rather than for a journal or something like that. I'm gonna create a list. And so I'm gonna do this by simply writing slash begin enumerate because I want my list to be item um, numbered. So this will create a list where each one of my references has a number associated with it. So I'll put begin enumerate. And you'll notice that automatically it fills in the end enumerate. So we have the beginning enumerate where the whole list is starting and the end enumerate where it's ending. And in between there we have an item. And this will be the first item in my list. And so I'll make up a reference. So I'm going to put Agler, David, W, 2018, some article, and I'm going to make some italicized text. So I'll put text IT and I'll put a uh, journal of special magic. And I wanted, you know, the 23rd volume, third issue, pages 14 to 17. And I'm going to create another item. And here I'll write item in. And then I'm going to copy my article, uh, write my citation, paste it in. And I'll do this a couple more times. And I'll hit recompile. And what I should expect to see is the, the section for references and all my articles there. And that looks great. The one thing I don't like about this is the space between each one of these articles. Uh, when I created this enumerate list, it adds a space and I wanna remove that space. So what you'll need to do in order to remove that space is to go back up and we'll add another package. We're gonna write use package and the package we're gonna add is enum item. Oops. And this is a package for modifying lists. 
And so one of the things that this enum item package allows me to do is send some options or modifications to this list. And the modification I want to make is to remove all the separations between the items. So I'm passing this option of no item separation to each one of these items. And what this will do is remove the space. And so I'll recompile. And here we go. I have my list again with, uh, in, without the space between. Now that looks better. So one thing I don't really care for concerning this document is the fact that when I kind of scroll down here, I don't have a sort of header or a footer. Um, there's this big white space here and I'd like to put maybe a line here and maybe a header that tells my reader what section they're in. So if they were reading a longer paper that didn't have a ton of sources, um, they would know about where they are. This will make the essay look more professional. To highlight this a little bit more, I'm actually going to um, add some more dummy text. So I'm going to change this from two to seven just to make the document a little bit longer. So to add the header, there are, is a really easy way. And then there is a slightly more fancy way. We'll cover both of them. So first let's do the easiest possible way of adding headers. This is simply to write the command page style headings. And I'm going to write the up a little note for myself up here that this is header information. So I've written page style headings. So let's recompile and see how this looks. Now I have a, at the top of the page, the section number I'm in along with the section title in this header. And that looks a lot nicer as there's nothing up here in the first page, but as we kind of move through the document, we see, oh, we're still in this clarification section. Oh, now this page has the conclusion and that makes the document look a little bit more professional. But let's say I want a more modif modified heading. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is comment out this page style headings. And I'll put a little note to myself here that says simple headings. And what I'm going to do instead is to use a sort of another package, which is allows me to create fancier headings. And this is, again, we'll write use package. And what we're going to use is a fancy header. And I'll put a note to myself that I want fancy headings here. That's what this package is up to. The next thing I'll do is write page style fancy. After that, what I want to do is make sure the document clears out any header or footer information because I want the header or footer information to be completely determined by this package fancy header. So I'll write fancy HF header footer, and then I'm going to leave this blank. And what this does is clears header footer information. All right. Now it's time to add the header information we want. And in looking at my document, as I kind of scroll through it, I noticed that the title of my document is logic homework. Let's say I'm doing some homework. And so one thing I might want in the top part of my paper is that for the document to say logic homework. And what I want to do here is actually add it in the right header up here. I want to put it where the numbers are uh, found on this document. In order to do this, I will write slash R head, and then I'm going to write logic homework in all caps. So what I should expect now is to see logic homework right up here in all caps, because I'm specifying in the right header, I want logic homework. So I hit compile and there it is. I have logic homework. So I guess I still want the, I guess I still want the page numbers. And so I want to add them somewhere. In order to do this, I have a couple options. Well, one way I could do that is to write C. So center foot, just like I wrote R head for right head. Here I'm going to write center foot. 
and I'm going to write the page, this command, the page slash the page. And what it will do is provide the page number on each page at the bottom. But one thing I really liked about the simple headings was it had the section title in this left header portion. And I want to keep that. So I'm going to write slash L head for left header. And in order to make sure I put the section title up there, I'm going to use the command slash left mark. And that is going to take the section or sub the section for each one of these um, sections and put it up here in the header. So the reader knows exactly which section they're in just by glancing at that header. So when we hit recompile, we should see this section title up here, as well as the footer, the page number in the footer, the central part of the footer. And that's what we have here. We have the section title or section number, the section title, the logic homework, which we wrote in the right header, and then the page number is now re-added to the bottom. And I could change this how in a number of different ways. If I wanted to move the footer instead to the right, bottom right, I might write R foot and then put the page. Or if I wanted in the left, I could put L foot the page. And if we run compile here, we should see the page number in both the left, middle and right footer. And if we do that, we see there it is and all three right in the bottom here. But of course, that doesn't look very good. So we'll just leave it in the center. One last thing before we move on to another topic is if you look at this um, line in the header, you, we might say, well, you know, I'd like to make this line a little bit larger. And since we have a line at the top, I wouldn't mind having a line at the bottom. We can actually change the width of this line and it's a simple way, process to do. What we'll do is write slash renew command. So here we're changing the command in the fancy header package and we're going to change the width of the header. So we'll write slash head rule width. And you see that um, Share LaTeX is kind of giving us a suggestion, uh, it's trying to auto-complete it. And we'll go ahead and cl click enter and we're going to make the width of this header slightly larger. And we'll put it, um, I think it by default it's one point. We'll put two, actually let's put it five point just so we can see it clearly. And then we can go ahead and change it. I also wanna add a line at the bottom. And so what I'm gonna do is copy this command, paste it. And instead of writing head rule width, I'm going to put in foot rule width. And here we don't need to make a large line so we can see it. I'm simply going to make it one point. So that'll be a thin line down here. So when I recompile, we should see these numbers on the left and right footer removed. We should see a line at the bottom of the page and we should see a much thicker line at the top that we might need to go back and edit. So let's hit recompile. And there we have it. We have a large line here. And now we have a line at the bottom of the page in the footer. And we also have the our page number centered. Now this line looks a little bit much and we might modify it, make it fancy in a number of different ways. But here we're interested in just keeping things simple. And so I like the line larger than it was before, but not as large as this. So I'm gonna change it from five points to two points. I'll hit recompile again. And there we have it, a little bit of a larger line. It's not obnoxiously large. <laughs> but it isn't uh, as thin as it was before. Okay, so I like how this looks, but you know one thing that bothers me about this essay or this how this whole thing looks? What bothers me is that we have a paragraph here and then in the next paragraph, there isn't a large space between these two paragraphs. Instead, we, in order to offset the paragraphs, we have an indent. I'd like to change that. I'd like to keep every paragraph left aligned so there's no indent and in order to distinguish the different paragraphs to put a space between those so what i'm going to do in order to do this is go into the preamble again and i'm going to add a couple comments i'm going to put paragraph spacing and indents so i know that you know what i'm going to write in here is going to modify the, this feature of the document 
And so I want to set the length of the indent to zero. So to do that, I will write slash set length. And you'll see that uh, share latex trying to prompt a, you know, a command. I hit enter to let it finish. And I want to set the indent of the paragraph. So par indent. I want to set it to zero. So I'm going to write zero em. But you could specify it in other ways if you wanted using a different spacing method. So this will set the paragraph to zero. But if I have the paragraph at zero, then I won't be able to distinguish one paragraph from another. And so I want to add a space after each paragraph. So I'm going to write set length again. And I want to specify the amount of space that's skipped before or after each paragraph. In order to do that, I'm going to write par skip. So paragraph skip. And I want to spe specify the skip to 1m, so this, the size of 1e. Now I'll hit recompile. And what I should expect to see is that each after each paragraph, there is a s skip of 1m, so a space. And in, we remove all of this indenting. So I'm going to hit recompile. Now that looks a little bit better, but one thing you note that is happening is that there it seemed to increase the space after each section title. And that doesn't look very good. There is a large space between each of the subsections as well as the sections, and I'd like to tighten that up a little bit. To do this, what we're going to need to use is another package. So I'm going to use package and the package I'm going to use is called title sec. And I want to specify the spacing around different sections. So I'm going to write slash title spacing. And I want to specify the spacing of sections. So I'll write slash section. And then I want to specify the spacing before or to the left of the spacing, which is this first parameter. Which the next is going to give a kind of flex between before and above, at least I think. And the th third one is going to specify the spacing below the section. And for me, that's the important one. So I want to specify the spacing to the left as zero points. So I don't want any kind of indent of the sections. I want to give LaTeX a kind of room to um, fit everything nice and uh, how it thinks is best and say, well, you have a sort of eight points of flexibility here. And then I want to specify the space below as not having any additional space. So I want to remove that parse skip. And so what I should hopefully see after this clarification is that this paragraph and this section title tighten up a little bit so there's not the, as large of a space. And so I'll recompile the document and I'll scroll up. And yes, that's what I found. There's a tighter space between the clarification or the section title and the paragraph. And I like how that looks a lot better. But as I scroll down, I notice that, look, look at all the space between the subsection. And so what I'll want to do is do the same thing for the subsections. So I'll hit title spacing section, but instead of section, I want subsection and I want the same parameters. Maybe I want less here to make the text even closer, but I'm, I think I'm comfortable with the spacing after the section. And so when I hit recompile, I should see this space tighten up even more. And that's what I do. I see this, uh, a lot less space between each of these, uh, subsections. So one more thing, let's take a look at our document one more time. So we're going to download it as a PDF and then I'm going to open this PDF and I'm looking at this document and it looks pretty good, but let's say I wanted to add a figure or a table in here. How would I go about doing that? And how would I go about referencing that figure or table? So I'm going to go back down to my document and let's say under even more clarification, I have two paragraphs. So I'm going to put two to three and then another paragraph and let's say four. And in between those paragraphs, I want to insert a table with some data. What I'll do to insert that is to write slash begin table and the ensure LaTeX will fill in all the parameters or all the commands that are needed in this, this environment. 
It'll have the begin table. It'll make sure the table is centered. It'll create this sort of cells for the table. It'll add a caption and it'll create a label in which we can refer back to it. I'm going to also add an additional command in these bra square braces right here by writing uh, exclamation point in H. This is just telling LaTeX that I want this table here in the exact spot I'm writing it right after these paragraphs and not to put it in some other space like let's say the top of the document. If I wanted that I would write T or at the bottom of the document I'd write B. So I want it right where I am specifying this if, it, if it's possible. So what it gives us is uh, if the part we want to focus on is this begin tabular C we have a pipe C and then tabular. Now each of the cells, uh, what this says is that there are two columns and those columns, the information in them, in them is, are, is centered and it's separated by a pipe right here. Now let's go ahead and just write some random things in there just to get a sense of how it looks. I'm gonna write that, 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 and that. So one thing to note is that these ampersands separate each one of the cells. So if we wanted to add additional cells to this table, we would need to specify we needed additional col columns, and then we would need an ampersand to separate each one of those individual cells. And this double slash right here tells LaTeX that, okay, this row is done, let's move to the next row. So let's hit recompile and see this table. Okay, so we have our table right here. You'll see that we have two columns and two rows. We want to flesh out our table a little bit more. And what we we'll want to do, I think, is to put some maybe more meaningful information. So what I'm going to do is create a table that specifies the number of goals the soccer, important soccer players have had. So the first thing I'm going to do is write, well, I'm going to have a column where I want the name of the soccer player, and I'm going to have a column with their num the number of their goals. And so let me list off some famous soccer players. Pelé, and let's say he scored 500 goals. Uh, we'll put Maradona, and let's say he had 400 goals. Again, we're going to write this double slash and this ampersand to separate the the cells. Uh, let's say we have Messi. Let's say he had um, 403 goals. And let's say we have Cristiano Ronaldo. Let's say he had 304 goals. So now what we should see here are again our two columns. And one under one column we have the names and the other column we have the goals and it will be centered and the columns will be separated by this pipe. So let's recompile. And that's what we get. Obviously this table does not look good, so let's make some small changes to it. Let's first write, make the name bold. So we'll have the, the headings bold. We'll write name, and in order to make this bold, I'm gonna hit Control B. But you could write text BF and then put make sure name is in there. And I want the goals to be bold as well, so I'll hit Control B, and then I'm gonna write goals. Next, I don't like this line between name and gold, so I'm gonna go up to after tabular and delete it. And I also don't like how the names are centered. What I would like them to do, or at least this first column, is for them to be left aligned. Now, if we go up here to tabular, you have C and C. You have a couple options. You can make the left cell left align. You can make this first, I mean this first row left align. You can make it right aligned. You can make it centered. And there are some other ways, especially if you have longer text to kind of format or in, insert breaks. But since our table is relatively small, I'm gonna make sure that this is left aligned. And I think that I'm gonna like that better. In addition, I would also like a line underneath the headings. I would like a line underneath the names and goals. And to do this, I'm going to write slash H line after the double slash. And I'd also like a line at the bottom of the table. So I'll write slash H line, and this will create another line underneath the table. So let's hit recompile, take a look at that, and see if we can make any additional changes. 
That looks a lot better. Um, I think maybe it might look better if it was in small caps or in small caps and bold, but it definitely looks better than what we had before. One thing that stands out though, it says table one caption. You could of course remove the caption altogether by commenting it out. If you were to comment it out and hit recompile, we will see this table one go away. But just for the purpose of using it, let's keep it. And so we'll write soccer players and their goals. Now that will add a caption underneath this table that says soccer players and their goals. But we also have this label underneath the caption. It says label tab my label. And this tab indicates that the type of thing it's referring to is a table. And what we will and this my label is simply the label that we we have to designate this particular table. And so here I'd like it to say ta to refer back to this table as sock slash goals. But you can use whatever you want in order to label this table. This is just a convenient way for me if I inserted other if I inserted other tables to know that this table refers to soccer players and goals. So now when I hit recompile, I should see the, the caption change. So I hit recompile and there I have it table one soccer players and their goal goals. Now one thing I might want to do though, is in the course of my essay or paper, I want to refer to this table. I want at some point in the text to say, well, now it's time to look at this particular table. Now we would imagine that somewhere in the, these paragraphs itself would, we would look to it, but I'm just going to use a sort of sample sentence here to show you how to refer to this table. So I'll write, as you can clearly see in table, and now I need a way of referring to table one rather than a different table. One way, although not the probably the best way of doing this, is simply to write slash ref, and we are going to refer to this particular table. So we'll put slash ref, and then um, share LaTeX actually will give us some options. It will look through your document and see all the figures, labels, references, and you can kind of scroll through them to select them. Since we only have one labeled item here, the only thing we can pick from is tab colon sock goals and so i'll hit enter and recompile and what we should see is it says and you can clearly see in table one so let's hit recompile and there we have it as you can clearly see in table one referring to this particular table so if we move this up here it would always refer to the table if we were to add a different table in LaTeX would reconfigure it such that it referred to this table rather than some other table since we've, we're specifying which exact table it should refer to by specifying its label. So let's finish everything off by recompiling and downloading our document. We'll go up to this little downward arrow, click download PDF, and it will download our document. I'll open it up and take a look at it. So we have our title, we have our section titles, we have some text, we have the footnote here, we have uh, subsections, we have a table, we have a way of referring to that table, we have more subsections, and we have a reference page. And in addition, we have this nice looking header and a footer down here, which re refers to the page numbers. And so we have a full document here with a number of different features, all written in share latex and one of the nice things about share latex is, is share latex is once you've set this you can always reuse all of your commands if you like this a little bit tighter and you can go ahead and specify it and then when you use another document you can copy and paste all of this information and just write in the text that you want here so this is our document i hope you found this informative for making your first LaTeX document with a number of different features. I didn't go through all the commands. This isn't the most sophisticated document. I didn't explain what you know the document class is or how to create books. And I didn't try to walk through, but what I hope it did was to get your feet wet in learning how to use this particular thing 
And I'll put a bunch of links in the description below for additional sources if you want to do fancier things. There's a great community behind using creating LaTeX documents. And if there are two resources I want to draw particular attention to. The first is on the Share LaTeX website. And there they provide a number of tutorials, both written and video tutorials. And much of the content covered in this video is also covered there. But there are some additional tutorials there that I think are worth checking out. Particularly if you want to do mathematics, there's a great uh, video on that. In addition, there's images. Let's say you want to put pictures, uh, how to use more sophisticated bibliographical resources, uh, more complex tables and matrices, as well as creating longer documents like books. The other resource that I want to draw attention to is the tech site on the Stack Exchange website. If you have any question about LaTeX, this is a great source to go to because chances are all of the questions that you could possibly ask have been asked already and likely answered already. So this is a great place to look as well. Oh, and there's one more site that's really worth looking at. This is the Comprehensive Tech Archive Network. When we talk about packages and these different add-ons you can put in Share LaTeX, this is where you wanna to go to browse the various packages. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I'll put links in the description below for other resources on LaTeX. And if there's something you'd like to see in particular, like how to do tables or figures, or how to modify headings somewhat, I'm happy to provide another video that would cover this.